I want to go through lab four. I'm going to actually go through the lab worksheet itself and describe kind of what's going on and talk about everything. But what I'm also going to say is that I'm not going to talk about holding circuits. I'm not going to describe how they work or you know what we use them for or whatever. I'm just actually going to talk about specifically about how to build the lab and what's actually going on with the lab and what are the circuits doing in the lab and kind of the step-by-step -step process of building the circuits in the lab. Um, if you want to know more about holding circuits, then you're going to have to go to this material over here. This is a great PowerPoint video that I did. The PowerPoint presentation is right here. It's all about the holding circuit. Um, and I get a little excited about <laughs> actually how amazing holding circuits are here. And they're just like, I, I'm not even going to go there because it's so cool. Um, at least they're so incredibly powerful. I mean, you guys really need to understand these things to move forward like in life. Okay, good. So um, make sure you, you wrap your head around that stuff. Now, this is me building the circuit itself, but this video here is where, where I'm at right now. And this is me just actually stepping you through the lab and talking about what the design is of the lab and you know what's actually happening. So I'm going to uh, jump on the lab here. This is the worksheet here, and we'll take a look at the worksheet. I'm going to go all the way up to the top here. We'll start from scratch. Okay, so What's going on here is that it's step by step. This lab is step by step. There's one signature at the very bottom. You just do the last signature. Once you get all this done, build the first, build this first circuit, then the second circuit, then the third circuit, then the fourth circuit, and you'll be done. Essentially, each iteration of this circuit is just an addition to the circuit in the previous page. So you're going to build this first, and then as you can see, we're going to put a little logic here in here and what I'm doing is I'm adding, wherever I'm adding anything, I'm just putting this little blue area here. In this case, I'm just changing things, some things, I'm adding this. Uh, and then over here, we're adding some more stuff, temperature control. And then over here, we're going to add another rung. This rung actually does nothing, which is kind of weird, but bear with me. Uh, and then we're going to add one little tiny bit of logic up here. Um, and I left it all alone because it's kind of a little complicated, not really complicated, but this is kind of a, a hold on, take your time, do this properly kind of step. And then we're going to jump down to our final circuit, which is this circuit here. And you're just going to build this circuit here. So. Moving forward, going back to move forward, uh, what I'll do is I'll discuss what's happening here and then I'll move forward with all of the rest of the circuits. So what's going on here is that we don't have a holding circuit. We just have a normally open push button. There's a stop button there too. In this particular situation, the stop button's really not doing anything for us. I guess I could over, if someone was pressing the start button, somebody else could go over and actually, if someone was pressing and holding the start button, Someone could go along and hit the stop button and kind of override, so maybe that's good. But right now, let's just move forward and see what's going on here. Um, the relay in this case is not controlling anything. It's not controlling the light. It will control things later, but for now, this is just the first step. So build this, press the button, the light will come on, which is actually a cooling element. So what we have here, is we have some kind of process here where it's a warm environment or for whatever reason we want something to be cold and maintain its cold temperature um, and it's an environment that is that it is in an environment that's making it warm okay good so i press this button the cooling element comes on the relay coil energizes and other than the cooling element coming on really nothing else is going on but we're going to add some logic and it's going to be a holding circuit welcome to your very first cool holding circuit so this is actually quite remarkable just hold on to this moment because this maybe you'll remember this like forever press the button and then release it the relay will stay on and the light will stay on the cooling element will stay on by the way that cooling element could be lots of things it could be a Peltier module. Just, you know what? I'm going to grab a Peltier module because I've got some here. I've got a whole drawer in here. I've got a whole bag of them here, actually. I bought I, I bought these for a project that I that I actually ended up solving in a different way, but I ended up with these really, really cool Peltier modules. So this guy's cool. If I put temperature on here, hot. If I put temperature on here, I'll say that again. If I put voltage on here, one side gets hot and the other side gets cold. So I can actually cool things with this. I can also heat things up as well. So Peltier module is really cool. There are lots of other kinds of ways that we can cool things. Um, but essentially, just imagine that that is some device. Maybe it's just a fan. It's some device that when it is activated, it will cool something. Okay, good. In this case, I'm not going to walk through how a holding circuit works. I told you. You can go watch that PowerPoint. I press this button. I release it. 
and the cooling fan stays on even though my finger's off the button because it's remembering this memory latch or holding circuit is remembering the event of you pressing the button. Pretty cool. Okay, good. So moving down here, we are adding one more thing. Now look at this. I've actually removed the lamp from that rung. The lamp is no longer in parallel with the relay coil one. It's actually on an entirely new rung completely. Okay, good. So what's going on here is that all I'm doing is I'm taking a contact from here and putting it here. Now this is no big deal for you guys. It's 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 nothing new for you guys. The only thing that's new here is the holding circuit. Okay, so the addition is just adding this relay contact to cool this fan and you're good. So let's just move on. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add more logic to that last rung. And this is actually going to create automatic control. Yeah, it's going to automatically control the temperature. The only part about the user inter interface in this case is that someone comes along and presses the start button to start the automatic control. Okay, so the user is not part of the control of the temperature or the cooling process. The user is just the operator, pardon me, it's just either turning it on or turning it off. Okay, so here we go. So the operator comes along, presses start. If, okay, so if it is hot, right, what's going to happen is that this will be closed. So the cooling element will come on. And because I've pressed this button, this contact will be closed. So if it's warm, this will be closed. The cooling element will come on. The cooling element will cool down the environment and it will make it colder than 27 degrees Celsius and this will become open. So this is a normally open temperature switch. That's what it's called. By the way, don't call it a temperature sensor because a sensor is an analog device. This is a switch. It's discrete. It's yes or no. In this case, it is a normally open temperature switch that is that the threshold is 27 degrees Celsius. So if it is below 27 degrees Celsius, that contact, that switch will be open. Okay. If it's above 27 degrees Celsius, if it is at 27 or above 27, that switch will be closed. Okay. Good. So the environment is warm and uh, this guy becomes closed and maybe I'm the operator that says, I better start the cooling process. I better go over and start it. I press the start button. And because this is closed, the cooling will come on and the cooling will cool the environment. This will become open and then the cooling element will stop and then it will just be cold. But, you know, there's some heat in the environment somewhere and it warms things up again. So it warms things up again. And then the operator pressed the start button a while ago. So he doesn't have to come over and press the start button again. As soon as it gets warm, this will become closed. The cooling element will come on. And then it'll cool things down until this becomes open and the cooling element will stop. And that cycle will just continue or that loop, that control loop will continue. What's going on here is that um, that temperature will maintain somewhere just a little, maybe, a maybe just a degree above or just at 27 degrees Celsius. Because if the heat is, if whatever the environment is, if it's warm, and this cooling thing has to, to has to beat it, and the cooling doesn't come on until exactly 27, it may take a degree or two to cool it down to, 20, to below 27 again. So as soon as it goes below 27, the instant it goes below 27, the cooling comes off. So this is gonna float around 27, 28, maybe 29 degrees, depends on what the environment is and what's heating it up in the first place. But it'll pretty much be maintained within a degree or two. Uh, and automatically. Now, if I wanted this cooling process to stop, I just go hit the stop button. I'm going to hit the termination contact. Yeah, termination contacts are absolutely, completely, and entirely important in any kind of holding circuit. You have to put a termination contact in. If you don't, you can't shut the holding circuit down. Yeah, watch that PowerPoint, that video PowerPoint on holding circuits, and you'll be like, oh yeah, termination contacts are pretty important. Okay, so what actually, one more thing. What I do when I'm designing my ladder logic, often I'll throw a holding circuit in there and I'll just like, I'll just deal with it later. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with the term, termination contact later and I go on and design the rest of it. And then I actually find at some point, oh, there it is. That's the thing I'm going to use to terminate that because whatever whatever you're holding on to, you probably want to kill it at some point. And often like kind of down 
down the process, down the critical path, down the path of control, you realize, oh, that's where I need to turn that thing off. And that is going to be my termination contact. So don't concern yourself like entirely with adding a termination contact when you're doing your designing. You can do it kind of as you go. Just build a holding circuit because you know you need it and then move forward and then and you'll get to the point where you're like, ah, I got it. I know where my terminate. I know what my termination signal or what information I'm going to use to terminate that. Um, moving forward. Okay, good. So this is automatic control. All the operator has here is he presses start to automatically start to start the automatic control. And if he wants to stop it, he can hit stop. In the meantime, it's just controlling itself automatically. Now, the next rung is actually a little bit different. Okay, let's move forward here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move the cooling element and put it back in parallel with the relay. I'm putting it back in parallel with the relay and I'm changing the last rung entirely. Okay, so I'm getting rid of that contact. Ready? I'm getting rid of this contact. I'm keeping this guy and I'm changing this guy to a relay. And this guy's going to go in parallel with that. Ready? I'm going to move down and you'll see that. Putting the cooling in parallel with this relay coil. And I'm getting rid of that contact that was there and I'm just driving this entirely just like this. Now, this actually won't do anything. This guy does nothing. Essentially, the only thing that's coming on is that when it gets hot, this relay energizes, and when it gets cold, this relay de-energizes, and on and on and on. So this is just kind of like the preliminary step to the next rung that actually does something. Now, again, like I mentioned at the very beginning of this, that this is a little tricky, and I will sit with this for a second, but later, after I explain the logic of what's going on here. This is also a control system. It's also a control system, but the loop, the control loop, the, the operator is, is more involved in this control loop. The operator says, hey, if the temperature is high and I want to cool it, then I will press the start button. And once it becomes cold, then the cooling process will stop. It's not automatic, right? The only aspect, it's actually automatic, but it's not looped, right? It, there's not a loop control here. Now, let me just walk you through this. Okay, if it is warm, I'm going to need to turn the cooling element on. Okay, so if it is warm, this will be closed. Okay, I'll just show you why. If it's warm, this will be closed. This will be energized. That will be closed, so it's warm. And this is closed, so if I press the start button, the cooling element will come on. But this is the difference between the last circuit that was controlling the temperature. In this case, the cooling element's gonna come on, it's gonna get cold again, this will become open, this will de-energize, this will go back to its normal state. It will become open, and it will terminate this cooling process. If it gets hot again, it's not gonna automatically come on. The cooling process will not automatically come on again if it gets hot again. I mean, if it gets hot again, this will close, this will energize, this will become closed, but I've terminated this signal. This is no longer being held. The holding circuit has been terminated because previously I pressed play and then it held on to that event, holding circuit. And then what happened when the temperature went low, this opened and terminated that. It's no longer holding on to that signal. So my start button, the information that someone presses start button, it's gone. There's no more memory of that. So what's happening here is that if the temperature goes up, that'll close, this will energize, this will become closed, but this cooling is not gonna come on until an operator presses the start button. So the difference between this and the last circuit is that if it is hot and the temperature needs to get lowered, then it's only gonna happen if an operator presses the button, it will become cold and then once it becomes cold psh, that cooling process is terminated it won't happen again unless an operator presses the button okay that makes sense now i'm going to talk about the the little weird thing about this guy if you just add this in a lot of students i find add this in in parallel right so what's going on is that let's just take a look at this over here you see the contact is going to have to be put in here you're going to have to put a normally open contact in here if you put a normally open contact in here, you can't just do this. Let me just let me just do a little bit of a. I can't even know. I'm, I can't draw, but just deal with it. You have to disconnect. I think the word disconnect is really important here. You have to disconnect this wire. You have to replace 
this wire with that contact, right? So what a lot of students do is they just put the contact in and actually they put it in in parallel with this wire. Because you know, when you actually wire these things up, they don't look exactly like this. But the closer you can make your diagram look like the geometry of the circuit, the better you are to be able to diagnose it and understand it. But in this case, what I'm saying is, there's some wire that comes from power and it goes over to the left side of the stop. You have to remove that wire, make it go away, <whistles> gone. And then you replace that wire, again, that word replace is really important, with this contact. So what I see a lot of students do is that they just add this contact and they don't remove this wire. And then what happens is, when the temperature does increase, sorry, when the temperature does decrease, this doesn't actually terminate it because there's just another wire going along here. So that's important that you do that. Again, so we're just, we've said this is a control. It's different from the last control that was automatic. The last control was you press play and if it got hot, the cooling element came on, it cooled it. And then uh, it stopped cooling it. If it got hot again, the cooling element came on again and it cooled it until it got cold again. And if it got hot again, it cooled it until it got cold again, until the operator comes over and hits stop. And then that automatic process is shut down. In this situation, the operator presses the button if it gets hot and it will cool until it gets cold. And then psh, that's it. The cooling process is done. If the operator wants to cool the process again, he has to hit the start button to cool. What we're doing here is we're going to move forward and we'll take a look at this. And what's going on is that I'm adding even more logic, but it's just down here. It's just down here. I'm adding sustained closure. Now I want to talk to you about sustained closure and what this is all about. Sustained closure is kind of turning down or sorry, turning off a particular process. Okay. So if the, imagine this, okay. So imagine I have a button and the button, if I press the button, if an operator presses the button, an alarm will sound a buzzer or whatever. So I press the button and an alarm will sound. Now, Let's just say that we want to add a little bit of logic here that says if somebody's getting button happy, okay, they're getting really button happy. And if they hold that button for more than three seconds, right? Because it's just a beep, 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 beep. Maybe it's beep, beep, right? Something, I don't know. Just I'll stop making those crazy noises. But what I'm saying is that whatever, whatever reason, there's an alarm there or whatever. But if somebody's pressing that thing for more than three seconds, dude, that's just too annoying. And there's, those people need to get fired. Yep. They're, they shouldn't be pressing that button. They're holding it way too long, dude. It's not good. So what we're going to do is we're going to have sustained closure. And we're going to use a timer that starts counting as soon as Buddy presses the button. When someone presses that button, a timer is going to come on. It's going to start counting. If he's holding the button for more than three seconds, the timer contact will become closed. Then we're going to latch onto that with a memory circuit and use that as sustained closure. So essentially, you can try and build this yourself. It's, it's, it's a cool thing with a timer, good kind of project to do with a timing circuit. So what's going on is that if somebody holds a button for more than three seconds, a timer contact closes, I'm gonna latch onto that timer contact. Timer contact. The holding circuit, that, that holding circuit that's going on there, I'm gonna use a, a contact from that holding circuit, normally close contact, and I'm going to put it in front of the button. So now I've got sustained closure. So if someone presses the button, that horn or that beeper or whatever the alarm is not going to sound. It's not going to happen. So buddy's fired, but maybe someone can come along and say, well, okay, we've done some training with you. And the training is, dude, you can't do that anymore. You can't hold that button down for more than three seconds. It's not allowed. Next time that happens, it'll be shut down and you won't be allowed to operate the, the button anymore. So then a reset is required. So we put a reset in. Now the reset is going to be the termination contact that terminates the memory latch around the counter, the counter contact. Sustained closure is, hey, you know what? I don't want this thing to happen anymore. Whatever it is, if there's a button there and, and somebody's pressing it, or if there's a signal that's coming from somewhere, I, I, I want to ignore that signal. After a certain amount of time or after a certain event or for some reason, I want to say, no, no, I want to, I want to shut that down. And I want to sustain the shut. I want to sustain the shutdown of whatever that event is. Okay, good. So in this case, that's what's going on. As we know, we have a process where you press the button. It's going to cool the system. 
Once it has fully cooled the system, it's gone down below 27 degrees Celsius, it's going to terminate the cooling. Okay, so for whatever reason. Now, let's just take a look at the description here. Okay, in this application, the second step in a chemical process is for it not to be cooled. So what I've got here is I've got some chemical process here where I have to keep some kind of chemical reaction cool. I have to keep it below 27 degrees Celsius, okay? So what I'm saying here is that at some point, there's a second step to this chemical process where, you know what, I don't care. Actually, more specifically, I don't want it to cool again. I wanna make sure that the cooling element is shut down and it's sustained so nobody can turn it on again. Okay, so to ensure the cooling does not come on, sustained closure is used to ignore the signal coming from the start, as well as the high signal coming from the temperature switch. So we know that the high temperature and the start will make the cooling come on. We're just gonna say, no dude, we're not gonna listen to you anymore. We're gonna close that down. After, after activating sustained closure, the cooling will be shut down when the temperature goes below the set point if it goes above the set point, the start will not activate it. Now, let's just read that again. After activating sustained closure, the cooling will be shut down when the temperature goes below the set point. The cooling will be shut down. So if the temperature goes below the set point, that is the activation. That is the activation. If the temperature goes below the set point, that'll be the last time it happens. Okay, that'll be the last time it happens. Now, we don't want to allow the temperature cooling to happen anymore after that, because that's kind of, we're into the second step here. So um, we're gonna shut that down with sustained closure. And that's what this circuit is all about. So we'll take a look at this circuit here, and I'm just gonna zoom out just a wee bit. Here we go. So this is what's going on. I've added this guy, and I've added this last rung. Everything else is the same. This contact, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, it's all the same. So. If it's warm, that will be closed. This will energize, this will be closed. So therefore, when I press the start button, the cooling element will come on. It will cool the system. It will go down below 27 degrees Celsius. This will open, this will de-energize. This will go back to its normal state and become open and terminate this holding circuit. The cooling will not come on. If the temperature goes above 27 again, the only way that the cooling can come on is if somebody presses the start button. Now. That process is maybe continuing on in the operator. He's kind of monitoring things. When the temperature goes high, he thinks, no, nah, nah, I still want to cool it again. Maybe, maybe the next time I might not want to cool it again, but for now, I want to make sure that I do cool it. He presses start, it cools it again, warms up again. Now, what's going to happen is at some point, he's going to say, you know what? I want to make sure that I do not allow the cooling to come on anymore. So he goes down here and he closes this switch closes this switch. Now, you don't want to allow the cooling to go on past a certain point. Now, watch this. If I close this switch and it's hot, if I close this switch and it's hot, okay, this is going to open. Sorry, this is going to become closed if it, because it's hot. That will be closed. This will be energized. That'll be closed. But take a look at this. This guy is going to be open. Right? Because this is directly tied to this. This is R2-1. This is open. So it's hot. That's open. Now, I'm closed. I've closed this switch. I've closed this switch either when it's cold or when it's hot. It doesn't matter. I've decided as an operator, that's it. No more cooling. This is the last cooling cycle. That's it. No more cooling cycles after this. After this last cooling cycle, this is on because I pressed play because it was hot because that was closed. This becomes open. This becomes closed. This energizes, and because this is closed, this memory latch activates, and it remembers, it holds on to the event of the temperature going cold. Okay, good. So now, at some point, we know the temperature, the whole system's gonna heat up again because this is in a warm environment. Obviously, it's in a warm environment or else we wouldn't need cooling. When it gets warm again, what's gonna happen is that this guy is gonna close, this guy will close, but watch this. This is open. That is my termination contact. Actually, I have three termination contacts in this holding circuit. It's fine. You can put like 100 if you wanted. That would be weird. But you can put as many as you want. So in this case, if it gets cold and that's closed, this will become closed. 
this will energize, this will hold on to the event that it became cold. Once it gets warm again, and someone presses the start button, it's not gonna cool, right? I've got sustained closure. So this guy's energized, this is open because this normally closed contact has become open. So it's terminated this. Even if I press this button all day long, this cooling will not come on. Now, that's done. So the chemical process is done, the second stage is done, whatever, it's, it's, the whole, it's a whole new batch. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna open this switch. I'm gonna open this switch and I can have this cooling process work just fine until I get to some stage where I'm like, I don't wanna cool it anymore. I don't want to be able to cool it anymore. I want to sustain close the actual cooling process. I close this switch, it's gonna get cold again. This guy will become closed and then it's gonna kill this. When it gets hot again, if I press this button, that'll be open so nothing's gonna happen. There you go, that is the lab. That is the explanation of what's going on here. This is a bit of a difficult build and this is the first time you're gonna see, and it's an odd time, but you won't see it again. I mean, you won't not see it again. It's an odd time to have a normally closed contact in a holding circuit but it does happen. In this case, we're just reversing the logic here, and that's why I've got a normally closed contact there. So have fun building this lab, and I hope that makes sense. Okay, bye.